For our second survey of chemistry project, we will be covering the topics of metabolism, catabolism, anabolism, as well as the subtopics of ATP and coenzymes. To begin our project, we tested our classmates' prior knowledge of metabolism. We prompted them with the question, what do you think of when you hear the word metabolism? And here are their responses. All right. <laughs> what do you think of when you hear the word metabolism? I think of food and like calorie intake. Okay, good. And you? Um, I don't really know. I just think of like eating. Okay. That's about it. Good answer. <laughs> Well, okay, Lindsay, what do you think of when you hear the word metabolism? Enzymes. <laughs> What'd you say? Enzymes. No, they just. It doesn't have to be right. It can be anything you think of. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay. What do you think of when you hear the word metabolism? <laughs> okay. And you? Wait. Thank you. We received all great answers from our classmates, and now we will share with you the actual definition of metabolism. Metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions that take place in an organism. And did you know that each moment there are thousands of reactions occurring in a living cell? There are two types of metabolic processes. Catabolism is the breakdown of large molecules into smaller molecules. Energy is usually released during catabolism. Catabolism breaks down carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins in food into smaller molecules releasing energy to supply the body's needs. So, this is an example of the oxidation of glucose. So, this is glucose. This is oxygen. And then the products are carbon dioxide and water. And we're showing you this example because this oxidation is an example of catabolism. Animalism is the synthesis of large molecules to smaller ones. Energy is normally absorbed during this time. Yay! The synthesis of a protein from component amino acids is an example of anabolism. Another important vocab word to know is metabolic pathway. Metabolic pathway, an organized series of consecutive reactions that converts a starting material to a final product. Now that we've introduced you to the basic definitions, let's take a closer look at catabolism. Catabolism can be organized into four stages. These are the four stages of catabolism. Catabolism of food begins with digestion, which is catalyzed by enzymes in the saliva, stomach, and small intestines. Once small molecules are formed, catabolism continues to break down each type of molecule to smaller units releasing energy in the process. Okay, 
The second stage is the formation of acetyl coenzyme A. During this stage, monosaccharides, amino acids, and fatty acids are degraded into acetyl groups, two carbon units that are bonded to coenzyme A. Good. Alright, um, the third stage is the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle takes place inside of the mitochondria. Mitochondria contain an outer membrane and an inner membrane with many folds. Energy production occurs within the matrix, the area surrounded by the inner membrane of the mitochondria. During the citric acid cycle, the acetyl groups of acetyl coenzyme A are oxidized to carbon dioxide. Some of the energy produced is stored in the bonds of a nucleoside triphosphate. The fourth stage is the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. That's good. This process, which also occurs inside of the mitochondria, produces ATP. Now? Yes. Okay, ATP, adenosine 5-triphosphate, the primary energy-carrying molecule in metabolic pathways. During stage 4, oxygen combines with hydrogen ions and electrons from the reduced coenzymes to form water. And the results of catabolism is that biomolecules are converted to CO2 and H2O and energy is produced and stored in ATP molecules. Ready? Mm -hmm. ATP is key in metabolism because we need the energy provided from photosynthesis or aerobic respiration to combine with ADP and then give us more energy to supply our cells with energy to do their daily functions. Yeah. yeah. And here's a closer look at the diagram that Christina just explained. Now that we've discussed ATP, let's talk about ADP. ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, is a nucleoside diphosphate formed by adding two phosphates to the 5' prime carbon OH group of adenosine. ATP has three phosphate groups, and ADP has only two phosphate groups. So many of our everyday activities are fueled by the release of energy from the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP such as breathing, <laughs> such as running, or walking. Or jumping jacks. It's also important to note that many reactions in metabolic pathways involve coenzymes. A coenzyme is an organic compound needed for an enzyme catalyzed reaction to occur. An oxidizing agent causes an oxidation reaction, so the oxidizing agent is reduced. When a coenzyme gains hydrogen atoms, the coenzyme is reduced. A reducing agent causes a reduction reaction, so the reducing agent is oxidized. When a coenzyme loses hydrogen atoms, the coenzyme is oxidized. This diagram simplifies the differences between the two. 
Here's an example of a coenzyme that is a common biological oxidizing agent, NAD+. In this reaction, NAD+, is reduced to NADH. And here's one last diagram to sum up our project. Thank you for watching.